no one can imagine the privilege of getting to heaven. And uh, God's plan was amazing. <laughs> God's plan is uh, greater than no one can imagine. And uh, today is the 28th Eight, yeah. of November 2018. You see, God has planned a, a position for man. God, God's original plan for man was so so amazing he's gonna bring us to heaven we're gonna live forever mm. we're gonna live in righteousness he's prepared mm. a place for us in heaven uh, a mansion or whatever i don't know it's gonna be more than we can imagine yeah it's gonna be the best thing the best thing i mean and uh, it's gonna be such a privilege mm. and we're gonna reign with god forever and ever and uh over his creation, we're gonna maybe we're gonna be he be be his body. We're gonna become a part of God. Yeah, I mean. uh, it, it is the greatest privilege uh, imaginable. And uh, and then it's written in uh, in Luke fourteen. Luke fourteen. From verse 15 to 35. I don't know if I'm going to read that far. But 15 to 35? Yeah. And there... <clears throat> now when one of those who sat at the table with him, with Jesus, heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. He realizes how blessed that man is going to be. He's going to eat bread in the kingdom of God. But then Jesus is explaining. Then he said to them, to him, A certain man gave a great supper. Did you find it? Oh, we can yeah. wait for it. Luke 14. 14, yeah. Okay. From 15. Yeah. No, I've come to 16. Yeah. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the host, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the street into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my host may be filled. For I say to you that none of those who were invited shall taste my supper. You see, this man, the Pharisee or whoever said this, uh, he, he said, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Yeah. It's such a blessed position. It's yeah. such a privilege. It's uh, no privilege higher than to end up in the kingdom of God and eat with Jesus. And and, and for the promise of God that he has promised to us, it's no promise higher. It's the eternal life. It's eternal. And then Jesus said, well, now I'm going to tell you something. It's like a king. A certain, or a certain man who had, had gave a great supper and invited. He's giving a parable of the kingdom. 
that the, this privilege is not going to be valued. It should be valued because it's going to give us more than we can even imagine. We're going to be elevated and ex exalted to such a position if we receive it, if we say yes to it, if we uh, receive this invitation. But most people are going to turn it down. He's going to ask them to come. Come to the party. Come to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Come. But people are going to make excuses because they're occupied with other things. And they will turn down the offer. And then he's going to be so desperate that... Uh, and then verse 21. So that servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the host, being angry, said to his servant, Go quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the lame and the blind. And he did that and probably these people received the invitation. The poor, the blind and the maimed, they came. But there was still room. You see Jesus or God or the the certain man that the, had made us supper, he invited everybody. He invited everybody. He invited the rich. He invited the influential, the the intelligent, the the the, the mighty. The he invited everybody, but they turned it down. They didn't value his invitation. But the poor, the blind, and uh, and those they they received it probably. And then there was still room. And the master said to the servant, "Go out into the highways and." hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled for I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper Man, most people are going to turn down the invitation of this enormous to be joined to God to be one with God to inherit the kingdom of God, eternal life, and they're going to turn it down for material things, for things here, and they're going to lose it all. You see, for I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste of my supper. They're not going to inherit. They're going to live this short life and end in the region of death. They're going to turn down eternal life, righteousness, the kingdom of God, the blessed thing, the blessed place in heaven uh, to reign with God forever, to be joined to Him, to be His body, to, to be married, to be His bride. People are going to turn it down because they're so short sighted, they only see their tip of their nose. And they're going to turn it down for the love of the world because they love the world. They're not going to turn. To Jesus, they're not going to receive the invitation. And then he's continuing how to receive the invitation. In verse 25. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. So you see, to be his disciple, we need to give up all things and follow him. We need to give up the love. When he's saying hater, we don't, it's not, I, I've written different translations and it's not meaning hate, but it's, it's kind of hate compared to the love of Jesus. He that loves father, mother, sons or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, Jesus said. So we're, we, we, we kind of give up our commitment and, uh, and uh, to, to the world to follow Jesus. That is what it takes. If you're going to receive his invitation, we need to receive love for Jesus. And, and to receive love for Jesus, we have to give up our love for other things. And whoever does not bear his cross and come, come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, 
whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has led the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. But what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So we need to give up the love of the world or commitment to the world, even to family. And we need to give our heart to Jesus. But, but to give our heart to Jesus does mean that we will love our family, of course. But our commitment is to God. But the fruit of the Spirit, that the result of our commitment to God, will result in faithfulness in our jobs and it will result in faithfulness to other people and, uh, and the love of the brethren and the love of our children, the love of our wife and husband. It will result in that. But our commitment and faithfulness is to God, first of all. Hallelujah. So that is what it takes to, to inherit uh, the kingdom. But God, he wants everybody to come. He is inviting, and, and, and the reward is so much greater than what we can give up. It's so much greater. greater. It is forever forever in heaven and then we just have to give up a little bit thing here we need to give it up we need to give up serving other gods we need to give up serving uh, the world to follow Jesus to be committed to his word that is what is take what it takes we need to receive love for Jesus we need to receive love for Jesus. You see, to repeat what we talked about uh, on Sunday a little bit, uh, man fell away. Man, well, the, it was God's plan for man in the beginning that a man should receive eternal life and, uh, and, and live forever. That was God's original plan. But before man came so far, Man disobeyed God because God had said, "You can eat of every tree in the garden, but uh, you cannot eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil." And that's where man failed. They failed, and they ate from the tree of good and evil. They failed to obey the word of God. You see, even then, God had to test man to see if they would be committed to Him with all their heart. You see, that's a requirement from God uh, to us that we need to love him with all our heart you see with all our heart and that is what's the problem with these people here who didn't receive the invitation and didn't want to come because they hadn't received love for God or for this man or for this invitation with all their heart they didn't forsake everything they were doing to follow the call or to to go to the to the party that was ready for them they didn't value it as much they kind of took it as as it took they took it for granted it was like nothing and uh, other things were more important and uh, but that was how it was with Adam and Eve also they didn't value the Word of God enough and they started to listen to the snake the devil we told them that it didn't matter if they were eating from the tree of good and evil, that God had kind of been not telling the, the whole, telling them the whole truth, and they would not die if they eat from that tree. Because God has said, the day you eat from that tree, you're going to die. And the devil said to Adam and Eve, no, you're not going to die. You're going to become like God. And Adam and Eve, or Eve, she believed the devil. She believed the snake. She acted, she responded to the snake, and she disregarded the word of God. And because of that, that became sin to them. And because of that, sin entered man, 
and death because of sin. And, and Adam and Eve, because, think of this little thing. They wanted to check out. They were a little bit disobedient. They didn't, they didn't value the gift of God. They didn't value what he had for them. And they disregarded it. And they lost everything. They lost everything. It's terrible. Such a little thing. Just because they were lusting after this little uh, fruit on this one tree. A temporary satisfaction. Because of temporary satisfaction, they have disregarded the Word of God and they lost the plan of God. It was so great to live forever. To We have no idea what God had planned for Adam and Eve. It must have been great. I believe it was as great as He has planned for us now. So, before they came so far to eat from the Tree of Life, they disobeyed. Before they received eternal life, they disobeyed God. And sin entered man. And Adam and Eve were separated. They were separated from the tree of life. And, uh, and uh, we can read from Genesis 2.17. Genesis 2.17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. And I can read from chapter 3, verse 22 to 24. Genesis? Yeah. That's after they ate from the tree of life, that tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever, therefore the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So Adam and Eve were sent out of the Garden because of sin. And because of sin, death entered man. And sin, the law of sin entered the, the body of man and spread to all men. Sin and sickness and death and the curse. The, the earth was cursed for man's sake. Genesis 3.17 Then they then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. So sin came into the world, and sin had power. No, sin had power over man, and man became slaves to sin. And since sin spread to all men, sin spread to all men, because all men sin, or death spread, death spread to all men, because all men sin. And, and there was no mediator, no mediator between man and God, because all men had sinned. There was nobody standing in the gap, and there was no man that could save man. Man had no savior. There was nobody. We were cursed. We were under the power of the devil. The devil had become the world, the, the king of the world. And uh, and uh, and uh, to come to heaven, we would need a savior. No, we were cursed. We were all under the wrath of God because of sin. And the disobedience, we were all under the wrath of God. And a man definitely desperate and needed a savior. And God, he saw that there was no man. There was no man. We can read from Isaiah 59, verse 16. Isaiah 
16. Isaiah 59. 16. Verse 16. And there is written, He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. I can wait till you find it. Isaiah 59, verse 16. He saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, it sustained him. So God, he decided to save us by himself, by his own righteousness. So God Almighty, the Word of God, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And the Word became man and dwelt among us. So God became flesh and dwelt among us. God sent His Word, and the Word became flesh. And that is how He was going to save us. He had to become a man to be able to save us. He had to overcome sin. He had to be born as a man in a human body, probably with the law of sin in the body. He had to prove that he could overcome the temptations of the flesh. Jesus had to overcome it. And he had to overcome sickness. He had to overcome everything. He had to overcome the law of Moses. He had to prove that he could keep it because no man was able to keep it. No Jew was able to keep the law of Moses. But Jesus came and he never sinned. He never gave in to sin. He, he, fulfilled, he fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law of Moses. And, and when he was dying on a cross, he was dying there a righteous man. Jesus was a righteous man. And because he was a righteous man, he could, our sin could be put on him. So he took our sin upon his righteous body and he died on the cross. And because he died, because he was a righteous man, had never sinned, death could not hold him. But he had to, he had to only take the punishment for our sin. He had to be punished for our sin. He had to be sacrificed for our sin. And when he had spent enough time in the region of death, death could not hold him anymore, and he rose from the dead. Hallelujah! So Jesus had overcome everything, and he died for us, and he rose from the dead. And this was, this he had to do to save us. And he, when he, when our sin was put on him, then he was sacrificed for our sin. But not only that, but he also was hanging on a cross with the, the body, of the, the, with the human body, with the old sinful body hanging on a cross with him. And on the cross, that sinful body was crucified. I guess he could, it could be crucified representing the whole human race because Jesus was righteous. He had lived a life in victory. And because of that, he could crucify the human nature on the cross. And this way he freed us from the power of darkness. Colossians 1.13 Colossians 1.13 He was delivered he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. 
in I can read it a little more in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins he is the image of the invisible God the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So Jesus is the head of the body. After Jesus rose from the dead, he created a body. You see, Jesus was a human body on the earth, but after he, dead, he died, he went to heaven and he created a heavenly body. He created the body of Christ, and that is a spiritual body that we can join and that we can belong to that we can become members of and, and that is a great miracle and this is what he did to save us he created the body and he sent the Holy Spirit hallelujah so Jesus he was talking when he was on the earth that he was going to send the Holy Spirit and that is the key to why we can know be joined to God. Because Jesus said if, if he didn't die, then he could not send the Holy Spirit. But because he died, his spirit could be sent over all of the earth. It can be everywhere at the same time. And we can all receive his spirit. And that is all because he died on a cross. And it's all because he complete the victory on the cross over sin, over the old man, over the law of Moses, uh, over temptations, over the curse, even that he was cursed, even so he could, he could destroy the curse. As for this reason, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. You see, Jesus, the reason why he was coming to the earth in the first place, it was to destroy all the results of the fall of Adam and Eve, all the works of the devil. That was the works of the devil. That was the works of the devil was what was produced through the fall of Adam and Eve. And Jesus came to destroy all that. He came to destroy all the consequences of the fall of Adam. Sin, death, sickness, the curse, the devil. He even destroyed the devil on the cross. He brought him to nothing. So practically, the devil's power is absolutely nothing now. All power has been given unto Jesus. All power. Is given unto me, Jesus said, in heaven and on the earth. All power. There's no power left from the devil. The only way he is trying to make people believe he has some power, but he has no power. His only way to appear as having power is to deceive people. He has some kind of power to deceive. But in truth, if we find the truth, wow, we shall be set free. And we shall experience in truth that the devil has no power. We can trample on him and overrule the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. And now, because Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, we can now receive the Holy Spirit if we believe in Jesus. We can receive Jesus. We can receive the Holy Spirit if we believe in Him. And now we're coming back to what we read in the beginning. That to, to come after Jesus, we need to give up all things and follow Him. No one can come after me unless he gives up all things and follows me. 
no one can come to me unless he hates his father, or mother, and daughter, and child, and wife, and uh, and, and takes up, picks up his cross and follows me. It's not about a hate in this way, though, like, but it's about it's it's like almost like it's a comparison to the love of Jesus. We give up all our commitment to all things to follow Jesus. That is to believe. To believe is not a passive faith in what Jesus did on the cross. Not to believe is to give up all things and follow Jesus. To believe, Jesus said in John 10, 26-28 that He said, you, you do not believe because you're not my sheep, He says to the Jews. And then He says, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. To believe is to hear His voice and follow Jesus with all our heart. Not 50%, not 60%, but 100%. It's only when we give up all things and follow Him, when we give our heart to Him with all our we love Him with all our heart, then we shall receive the Holy Spirit, and then we shall receive eternal life. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit shall then give life to our mortal body. And that is what the miracle is about the Holy Spirit today that Jesus could send. The Holy Spirit is a life-giving spirit. You see, it's written in the Bible that the first Adam became a living soul, but the last Adam, Jesus Christ, became a life-giving spirit. So Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he became a life-giving spirit. And he sent the spirit back to the earth, and now we can receive the Spirit if we receive the love for Jesus, we receive the Spirit of God. And when we receive the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God can give life to our mortal body. And the reason why it can give life to our mortal body is because Jesus crucified the old man on the cross. So Jesus has given us the foundation of the victory that he accomplished on a cross. And now the Holy Spirit is, uh, is uh, effectuating this victory in our body. Gradually as we believe in the Holy Spirit, as we believe, as we believe in Jesus, uh, as we walk in the Spirit, the Spirit will give life to our mortal body and we will become more and more like Christ. Hallelujah! That's written in Romans 8.13. So we shall be his bride. We shall be the body of Christ. We shall be joined. We can read that 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. 13. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free or free. And have all been made to drink into one body. Hallelujah. So we receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. When we are baptized into the one body. And we have become members of his body. It's written in verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12. There is written. For as the body is one and has many members. But all the members of that one body being many. Of one body, so also is Christ. Hallelujah. So we're baptized into the body of Christ. We're baptized by one Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, to become members of the body of Christ, to be baptized into one body. And then we have been given to drink from one Spirit, and this Spirit shall give life to our mortal body as we. Walk in the Spirit. I shall read from Rome, Rome 8.13. Romans. Romans 8.13. For you did not receive... No, 8.13 to see. For if you, have, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Hallelujah. So we are to be led by the Spirit. It's kind of like to walk after the Spirit, to be focused on the Spirit, to be seeking the, the kingdom of God first. That is to be, be led by the Spirit. And when we are occupied with the Spirit, with doing the works of God, with, the, with worshiping in Spirit and truth, with prayer in the Spirit, then as we do these things, the Spirit will mortify the deeds of the body and will put on the new man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! And then finally, we shall be His bride. Or we are His bride now, but we shall, when we leave this earth, we shall be His bride, His wife forever. Romans 7. Romans 7. Verse 4 to 6. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. So we are married to another. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were arose by the law, bred work in our members, to bear fruit to death. But now we have been delivered from the to law. what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. Hallelujah! It looks like here he's talking to the Romans, or he's talking to also the Jews, that before they were married to the law, of Moses. But now we died to that law and we are married to another. We are now married to Christ. So now we need to figure out what it means to be married to Christ. And if we can live according to the the rules in this new marriage, then the Holy Spirit shall give life to our mortal body. As we live by the Spirit, Hallelujah. Therefore, my brethren, yeah. We should serve now in the newness of the Spirit. So you see, when we serve in the newness of the Spirit, then the Spirit, the Spirit will mortify the deeds of the body. Hallelujah. So, so we are now in God's wife as, as a church we are the bride of Christ we are married to God we are married to Jesus praise the name of Jesus and then we shall reign with him forever Revelation 22 5 Revelation 22 5 There shall be no night there, they need no lamp, no light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. This is the plan of God. Great plan. Great plan. Reign with God forever. Instead of just only living this short temporary life for 80, 70 or 80 years or even shorter, then to die and end in this region of the dead and go to judgment and, and, and uh, in the region of the dead there's fire, there's darkness, there's pain. Just because we want some temporary gain from the world, from this material world, from um, we want to live in our lusts and the, the satisfactions of our flesh. Instead of giving our life to Jesus, to serve Him in spirit and truth, to be committed to His Word for this short time, so that we can receive and inherit eternal life. Wow! What a loss to not value 
the promise of God, not the value, the invitation that God is giving to us. What a loss forever and ever we're going to lose the, the party. We're going to lose. We're not going to be, we're going to be rejected if we don't value his invitation. God has created man to live with him, to reign with him, to, to be a part of him. It is uh, not possible to come higher than that. God created everything. He's the beginning, he's the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. When to become part of God, to reign with him, it's not possible to come into a higher and better position. And uh, maybe not disregard the invitation for a temporary satisfaction of the things of the world. May we repent and follow Jesus today with all our heart. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray that we shall uh, heed your call and receive you and confess you as our Lord and to give up the love of the world to love you with all our heart, to follow you with all our heart. Jesus Christ, I pray for everyone who listens to this tape. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we all will be ready when you come that we will understand what it takes to enter heaven. It is to give up all things and follow you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. And for more messages like this, you can visit www.trustchrist.faith, www.lovejesus.today or YouTube. And uh, please support the ministry so we can reach out to many. Thank you very much. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.